Good evening. I'm going to do some brief announcements and then give you the pages and then the choir will continue. Today the Divine Liturgy is offered for Catholic Extension Society. It's the birth of our Lord. And we begin on page 76 in the Missals. And then we'll continue with the Anaphora of St. John Chrysostom on page 876. And before we do that, we're gonna do the lighting of the candles, which is a Maronite tradition that we do just before Mass. And then the, the, the choir will continue. So please turn to page five for the lighting of the candles. Shine your light upon us all, grant us joy with your bright dawn. Alleluia. Holy Lord, you dwell in light in realms of glory. Keep us free from sin and shame, dispel all darkness. Grant us purity of heart, may your justice guide our lives. Alleluia. Virgin Mary, you are blessed among all women. You were chosen by the Lord to be his mother. The eternal Son took flesh, dwelling nine months in your
Son into the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. O Christ our Lord, though you are God, you became man. Make us worthy to rejoice on this feast of your glorious birth. And with Mary, your mother, and with Joseph, your chosen one, to thank, praise, and adore you, crying out with all the angels. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and good hope to all. We glorify you, your Father, and your Holy Spirit forever. Amen. Peace be with the church and her children. raise glory, honor, and praise to the Father who in his love has sent his only begotten Son to us, and to the Son who was born of the Virgin Mary in Bethlehem, and to the Holy Spirit who fills us with joy, peace, and holiness on this feast. To the good one be glory and honor on this feast and all the days of our lives and forever. and thanks to you, eternal Son. You are without beginning or end. You are the hidden light who shines upon the world in the ancient of days, born as a child from the daughter of David. Today we celebrate the mystery of your love for us, proclaiming you are wonderful, O God, you became man. Yet you are still God. You are wonderful, O oh God. You came down to us and were born in a manger. Yet you fill heaven and earth with your glory. You are wonderful, O oh God. The angels, shepherds, and magi came to adore you. 
By your birth you tore down the walls, separating heavenly and earthly beings, reconciling heaven and earth. By your birth you brought together those who are far and those who are near to celebrate your feast. At your birth the angels announced to the shepherds, to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. Now, wondrous child, we ask you with the fragrance of this incense to help us to understand the mystery of your incarnation. Forgive our sins, free us from all distress, and remember our departed who have gone to their rest hoping in you. We raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit forever. Son of the Father from all eternity and Son of the Virgin in time. When you became flesh, our eyes were able to see God, bringing us closer to the one who dwells in the heights. With the light of your knowledge, you enlightened our minds with the knowledge of the one who is beyond our understanding. Accept our incense and forgive our sins and grant rest to our departed. We raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit forever. Amen. Kaddishat, aloha, kaddishat, chayel tono kaddishat, lo moyuto. Led men but David, it raham alai. Kadishat aloh, kadishat chayel tono, kadishat lo moyuto. She hodeti led. Men but the weed, it
sanctify our minds and purify our consciences, that we may praise you with purity and listen to your holy scriptures. To you be glory forever. foretold by Isaiah, wonderful his name shall be. Christ is born of a virgin, as a child God is revealed. Praise to you, child of wonder, all the peoples everywhere. Hope your sun shining brightly. A reading from the letter of Hebrews. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and your children forever. Brothers and sisters, in times past, God spoke in partial and various ways to our ancestors through the prophets. In these last days, he spoke to us through a son, whom he made heir of all things, and through whom he created the universe, who is the refulgence of his glory, the very imprint of his being and who sustains all things by his mighty word. When he had accomplished purification from sins, he took his seat at the right hand of the majesty on high, as far superior to the angels, as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, this day I have begotten you, or again, I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. And again, when he leads the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all the angels of God worship him. Of the angels, he says, he makes his angel winds, and his ministries a fiery flame. But the son... He says, Your throne, O God, stands forever and ever, and a righteous scepter is the scepter of your kingdom. You love justice and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, anointed you with the oil of gladness above your companions. And at the beginning, O Lord, you established the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you will remain. They will all grow old like a garment, and you will roll them up like a cloak, and like a garment they will be changed. But you are the same, and your years will have no end. Praise be to God always.
hear you, Liz. Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Saviour announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke, who proclaimed life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. Remain silent, O listeners, for the Holy Gospel is about to be proclaimed to you, listening with glory and thanks, the Word of the living God. The Evangelist Luke writes, in those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph too went up with, from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and the family of David. In order to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds in that region, living in the fields and keeping the night watch over their flocks. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were struck with great fear. And the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I announce to you good news of great joy. It shall be for all the people. For today, in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you, who is Messiah and Lord. And this shall be a sign to you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly host with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels went, when the angels went away from them to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go then to Bethlehem to see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went in haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the infant lying in the manger. And when they saw this, they made known the message that had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed by what had been told to them by the shepherds. And Mary kept all these things, reflecting on them within her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that had heard, all they had heard and had seen, just as it had been told to them. This is the truth, peace be with you.
God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spoke in times past to the fathers through the prophets. And last of all, in these days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. This letter to the Hebrews, as we've mentioned to you before, is written to a group of Catholics, a group of Christians, baptized, but who are from a, a Jewish background, and more likely even from the priestly caste. And they seem, when you read this letter, to be wavering in their faith. Being priests, they're meeting for the Eucharist in people's homes. They're persecuted. Members of their family, if not themselves, have had things confiscated from them, thrown out of their homes, some thrown into prison. And from the priestly caste, they still look up in the center of Jerusalem, and you have the magnificent temple complex with all of the music and all of the ceremonies and the procession still going on, things which they knew firsthand as priests in that place. And now we meet a handful of people in people's homes in groups of 30 or 20 over the Eucharist. And they're nostalgic for what they lost. And so what St. Paul writes in this letter to the Hebrews, he's writing to encourage them. That's why this beginning of the letter, which is what's read tonight, is St. Paul laying out who the Son of God is. Who is this Messiah and Lord, which is announced in Bethlehem. And the rest of the letter is to show that this Jesus of Nazareth is superior to the angels, is superior to Moses, and is superior to the old priesthood. We all know the story about the baby. We know this. It's everywhere. But the primacy of focusing on our Lord's humanity is Genealogy Sunday, this past Sunday, yesterday. We focus on this child who is born into a historical context, to a family in a specific place. At this instance, what we celebrate is the fact that it is more than just the birth of a baby. We are doing more than just wishing Jesus a happy 2018th birthday, which of course sounds a little ridiculous. In the Syriac tradition, we have often in our prayers, when addressing the mother of God, the very beautiful image, it becomes a pun in Syriac, but it works also in English, that the one whom you carry, carries the world. And this phrase comes up quite often in prayers, as I said, that are directed to the mother of God. That the child who is born in Bethlehem, this little baby that's born is more than just a baby. And in fact, the fact of being a baby is the least important of the reality that the child who lays in this manger transcends this time and is the eternal one who enters into our world. Which is why St. Paul opens his letter to the, these, these Christians, the Hebrews, to say to them, that in the past, God spoke in a fragmentary and provisional way to our fathers through the prophets. Other people spoke to them. Isaiah, Jeremiah, whoever these prophets may have been. Malachi. But now, these days, in these last days, God has chosen to speak to us personally. And this is the child that has entered into the world. This letter is written towards the end of St. Paul's life. It has now been over 30 years of contemplation of the gospel, the reality of this death and resurrection, the meaning of these divine mysteries, and he is about two or three years before his martyrdom. And what St. Paul is doing here, this letter is so profoundly theological 
that in the Egyptian tradition, it's listed right after the letter to the Romans, at the very beginning of the New Testament, the way that it's arranged. So that while we celebrate and we're all touched, everyone is touched. We pray this evening for those who also lost their lives in the tsunami. That was a Muslim country for heaven's sakes, but they're celebrating Christmas. And it wasn't just the tourists celebrating. You go to India and you will see over the streets, Merry Christmas. They're all Hindus. Everyone likes sparkly lights. We like that. And everyone is touched by the story of a baby. And the fact that they had a hard time because the Hampton Inn was full. So they have to go over to the caravanserai, which is basically a stable. And the stable is the inn that they can't get into. And so they're in a cave. So this, all this, these details of the human aspect touch everyone in the world, Christian or not. But for the Christians, we understand that this child is more than just a baby being born to a simple family at an unexpected moment. And it's that that brings us an adoration, which was sung so beautifully during the carols before the Mass began. Come, let us adore him. We kneel down before this child, because this is not just a baby, but it is the child who carries the world. St. Paul says that he is the refulgence. He is the glory and the shining forth of God himself. And that he is the very imprint, the very mark of God's nature. And this carrying, he sustains the universe. All of this is in these first lines. In a quiet moment, when the hysteria settles down, and you've finally gotten rid of that uncle that you don't really like, Later on this week, sit down and read this first chapter of the letter to the Hebrews. With all of the references to the Psalms that are in it, because it's profoundly beautiful. And what you will notice is that all of the quotations that St. Paul writes in this first chapter, in the Old Testament are referring to God himself. St. Paul, from the very beginning of this letter, makes it clear who this child is. That he's more than just the angels. He is the creator of the world. He is the one who sustains it in existence. So that he is superior, obviously, than any of the angels. He is superior to the angels who gave the law of Moses on Mount Sinai. And therefore he is greater than that Old Testament. And so you priests who have the nostalgia for the glorious ceremonies up at the temple, shake it off. Later on in the letter, he says to them, you've not yet resisted to blood. You're not dead yet. So, pick it up. Correspond with grace and move forward in this gospel. That's the meaning and the ultimate purpose for this letter. So that when he's writing that this child is the creator of all, this Messiah is transcendent and the permanence of son he doesn't say the son. He's not using the article in the Greek. It is the proper name of who this Messiah is. So that the child that is nursed this night. If you go to Bethlehem, there is a lovely, lovely chapel called the Grotto of the Milk, which kind of makes Americans squirm a little when they see the title. But when you go in, the entire church is surrounded by paintings and gifts that have been given throughout the centuries of statues and pictures, icons of the mother of God nursing the divine child. It commemorates by history that when they are told to leave shortly after this birth, because King Herod is going to have all of the two-year-olds and under killed, trying to get at Jesus, that before they leave, the mother of God stops before they hit the road completely and nurses that child. But this child who is being nursed, this child who is being swaddled, this child who is being admired by these shepherds in a feeding trough, is simultaneously the God who is judging souls who are dying at that very moment. 
that it is the same child who is also sustaining the universe and giving existence to this stable, to these animals, to the shepherds, to Mary and Joseph. He sustains them in existence. And so on this night when we come to our Lord, we commemorate this great historical moment. But we know that this Messiah and Lord is also the one who gives us light, who brings us healing, and whose greatest desire and the reason for his birth into this world is to reintegrate and to heal us and to raise us up to that level that we can become and truly be the children of God. And that's why when St. Paul finishes, as it's quoted today, he says that all the things which have been created, it's from the Psalms, that everything which has been created are like garments. You take them off, you get rid of them, but you, the Creator, remain always the same, eternally the self-same. So that this Creator, this prophet, this priest, this king, this judge, he finishes by saying from the Psalms, but you, you are always self-same, identical, transcendent, and your years have no end. Everyone from the story of Jesus' first birthday are all gone. And someday other people will be sitting in these pews and we will all be gone. But the reality of this child remains the same. And the grace that he offers each to us individually this night of healing and of integration and of elevation and sanctity always remains present in our lives. Thanks be to God and praise be to his name always. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. <laughs>
Jesus Christ. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to us as we in the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, the Lord and the Lord. Telvot madeb he da locho, walvot a locho da kare kayu, reino silvot aigo to heyu del bato fuesku de payeto, or kore sho. Lord in God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you. Out of their love for you and for your holy name, shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. As we remember our Lord, God, and Savior, Jesus Christ, and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, Saint Mary, Saint Jude, and Saint Charbel. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers, and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom the sacrifice is offered for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. Amen. Oh, uh-huh. 
Continue on page 876, the anaphora of St. John Chrysostom, 876. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Lord God and Father, holy and glorious is your name. You deliver those who love you from all that is contrary to your will. May we who have remained in your divine love be made worthy to be give one another the greeting of peace with a holy kiss. May we always speak words of peace, think of peace, and work for peace. Through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people, we raise glory to you, to your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace to your holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O priest of God. Peace to you, O priest of God. Peace to you, O minister of God. You, O server of the Holy Spirit. And each one of us give a reading of peace. Favor with love and faith. hidden from all creation. You are peace reconciling those who are enemies. You are forgiveness to those who sin. And you are comfort to those who are sorrowful. Open the door of your mercy to our petitions and in the abundance of your grace accept our prayers. Make us children and heirs of your kingdom through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people, and through your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, who are adored by all, angels bless your humanity, exalt you, and all creation glorifies you. Look upon 
may offer you an acceptable sacrifice that we may rise in glory to you and to your only Son and to the Holy Spirit now forever. Amen. The love of God the Father and the grace of the only begotten Son and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit. Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility. It is right and just. Truly it is right and just to thank, adore, glorify, and bless the majesty of the one consubstantial trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, a majesty that does not need our glory or become greater with our thanks. O Lord, those who sing your praises are countless, and they cry out with angelic voices and with sweet melodies proclaiming, exalted our weak human nature. In your mercy you sent your only Son into the world for our salvation. He dawned from the Holy Virgin like a ray of light from a bright cloud. He took the form of a slave, yet truly he is the Son of your majesty. He willingly became man to make us divine. He was born from a woman's womb that we may be born again from a spiritual womb. He became our brother so that through his grace we may become your children and heirs. He took us from being slaves and made us your children. He promised us a share in the reward that allows us to call you Abba, Father. He cleansed us from our sins with his precious blood that he poured out for us. For he is your only son. Kyrie eleison. Wabiyamu haudaktum khasha dilay ma bed khaye En sabir lachma bida kari shantan U barakh u kade Waksu ya bel tarmi dao karo mara Daba khul mehne khul Oh, <laughs> Kanna alkoso damsik wo men hamra wo men mayo Barakhu kade Ya bel talmi dao kado mara Sabish tao mehne kul khuhu O no deni tao the more deal dia tiki hadato. Rahlo fai kun wahlov sagie. Mete shadu meti hem. Hosoyan haume wa haye nal alam almi. Do the 
this in memory of me each time you eat this bread and drink this cup. You remember my death until I come again. We remember your death, O Lord. We, we profess your resurrection. We await your second coming. We implore your mercy and compassion. We ask forgiveness of sin. May your mercy rest upon us. O Word of God, who can comprehend that you willingly emptied yourself of your divine glory, who can explain your miraculous birth from a virgin, who can repay you for your saving passion which you freely endured, who can praise your plan of salvation for us. We can only ask of you, O lover of all people, that the sacrifice which we have offered be accepted on your holy altar in heaven the dwelling place of your hidden divinity in the company of all the angels and saints. Through this sacrifice, may we be worthy of the forgiveness of all our sins. When you come to judge the living and dead, do not pass judgment upon us to deny us, saying, I do not know you. On that glorious and fearful day, do not separate us from you nor cast us out of your paradise to a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. Rather, because of your holy name by which we have been called, look with mercy upon us. In your compassion you have made us worthy of the gift of your forgiving body and blood. So make us worthy to be one with you in holiness as you are one with your Father. For this your church implores you, and through you and with you implores your Father, saying, Have mercy on us, O mighty Father, have mercy on us. O Lord, as your sinful children receive your graces, to thank you for them, and because of them, we, we praise you, bless you, you, we adore you, we glorify you, we profess our faith in you, and we ask you, have compassion on us, O God, have mercy on us, and hear us. How awesome is this moment, O my beloved, for the living Holy Spirit to send to press upon us. For our sanctification, let us stand with reverence as we pray. Anin morio, anin morio, anin morio, ni te moro rojo chayu kadisho, una chena lainu al korbono hono. This bread, the body of Christ, our God, be for us a pledge of life to come, a body that grants us the everlasting joys of heaven, the body that renews our souls and bodies, a body that purifies us of all sin for eternal life. Amen. And that the mixture in this chalice, the blood of Christ our God, and be a blood that gives new life to those who receive it, a blood that guides us to the safe harbors and the dwellings of light, a blood that renews our souls and bodies, a blood that purifies us of all sin for eternal life. Amen. In your great mercy, when this body and blood is mingled with our bodies and souls, grant that it may be for the pardon of faults, the forgiveness of sins, and for the everlasting joy and eternal life with all your saints. Amen. We offer you, O Lord God, this pure and holy offering for your holy Catholic and apostolic church, which you have redeemed. Gather her children into unity, love, and faith, and guide them in peace and security. We offer it for the pure bishops of the true faith. Francis, the Pope of Rome, Bashara Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Nisrala Peter, our retired Patriarch, 
Gregory John, our bishop, the venerable priests, the chaste deacons, the pure subdeacons, and all the orders of the Holy Church. Teach them the word of truth so that they may spread it faithfully with justice and holiness. May they care for the flock that you have entrusted to them. Give them the proper means to accomplish your will and grant them a long life. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord of goodness, your holy church, and have mercy on all her faithful. In your compassion, heal all the wounded and injured among your flock. Punish injustice, strengthen all our brothers and sisters, bestow the grace of conversion on all. With your indestructible power, strengthen the bishops of the true faith, that they may be upright and courageous in their apostolic office. May they show fidelity as they stand ever before your eternal justice. Unto your honor and glory, may they prove themselves upright, dauntless, and persevering in the task confided to them to lead all the faithful into fullness, the fullness of your redeeming light and glory. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and dejected, for orphans and widows, for the sick and the distressed, for all those tempted by evil spirits, be the guardian and refuge of their lives. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord Remember the Holy Fathers, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, and confessors, especially the holy, glorious, and blessed ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. John the Baptist, the messenger and forerunner, who witnessed the betrothal of your holy church to your Son, Glorious St. Stephen, the Archdeacon and First Martyr, and all who pleased you and professed your name, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord For all the faithful departed who have gone to you from this altar and from every place throughout the world, grant them rest in your heavenly dwelling with all your saints and in your mercy. Forgive our sin, clear. Rest, O oh God, to the departed and forgive the sins we have committed with or without full knowledge. Lord, do not deprive us of your mercy, but keep us in the palm of your hands, lest we fall and go astray, so that we may walk on your paths, follow your ways, and do your will. Forgive us and our departed, and pardon all sins and transgressions, hidden and seen, committed with or without full knowledge. Make us worthy of a faithful Christian death that is pleasing to you, and join us to your righteous ones and to those who have done your will that in us and in all things your blessed name may be glorified with the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. As it was, is now, and shall be forever. Amen.
the pleasing oblation who offered yourself for us. You are the forgiving sacrifice who offered yourself to your Father. You are the high priest who offered yourself as a lamb. Through your mercy, may our prayer rise like incense, which you offered to your Father through you. To you be glory forever. O oh Lord our God, that as your only Son, with the radiance of your eternity, accomplish this plan of salvation for us, that we may come to you. May we call upon you with the prayer that he taught the holy disciples. Our Father, So merciful Lord, we ask for your compassion, for your grace, because worthy that your glorious name be made holy in us, that your kingdom come to assist us in our weakness, and that your will dwell within us. Deliver us from all difficult temptations, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Your only Son, and your Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads before the God of mercy, before his forgiving altar, and before the body and blood of our Savior, who gives life to those who partake of it, and receive the blessing from the Lord. O Lord God, you are good and the lover of all people. Look upon those who bow their heads before your majesty, and bless them with every spiritual blessing. Do not turn us away when we approach your divine and holy gifts, and let us not be guilty of unworthily receiving the body and blood of your only Son. Rather, make us worthy to share in your holy and life-giving mysteries with purity, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your good and holy Spirit now and forever. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit, let each one of us look to God with reverence and humility and ask him for mercy and compassion. Holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One I'm Holy Father, Father. One, one Holy, holy Son. Son. One and Holy Spirit, bless be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and in earth, to him be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy body, and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for new life. O Lord our God, to you be glory forever.
Again and again we thank you, O Lord, and raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy on us. Lord Jesus, you have made us worthy to share in your holy body and in the cup of salvation. How can we repay you for these your gifts and graces and for your goodness? As you have called us to approach this life-giving banquet, make us worthy so that your body may be mingled with our bodies and your blood with our souls for the pardon of faults, forgiveness of sins, and eternal life. You are blessed and your kingdom is holy. We raise glory to you, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. O oh God the Father, we bow before you and we entrust ourselves to your care. We ask you, imploring your mercy, to rest your right hand full of blessings upon us. Assist us protect us, bless us, and sanctify us by the Holy Cross of your only Son. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. So Dame Fifa, 
and the choir and all the hours that you have spent preparing. Thank you very much. You did a beautiful job. Maburu. So wishing you all a very Merry Christmas. Now we begin the 12 days of Christmas. It goes from today until the great feast of the glorious Epiphany on January 6th. You can count them later on the calendar. Those are the 12 days. So I wish you a blessed season of Christmas and a merry one with that, of light and grace and holiness. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and the blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever.